Greetings. Welcome to hashtag Art Transforms Us. I'm really happy if you could make it here tonight. Uh, this is the first of a series through the month of May. My name is Holly Jacobson, and I am the executive director of Path with Art. And um, we are an arts organization based in Seattle, and as or as we like to say, the Pacific North Best. Um, because we're based in Seattle, and I am in our Pioneer Square office tonight, I, at socially distanced properly, um, I want to acknowledge that our office stands on the unceded lands of the Coast Salish people, and in particular the Duwamish, and uh, that we, I really uh, recognize that and honor their culture and heritage. Path of Art is an arts organization for people who are in recovery from trauma. And, and we use the arts to transform people's lives in powerful ways. Uh, and whether that trauma is caused by homelessness, addiction, um, domestic abuse, uh, mental health concerns, physical health concerns, or COVID-19, uh, I mean, the list can go on. There's all kinds of trauma, racism, poverty. But I think we all have experienced a little bit of trauma lately. And what we know is that creative practice is a, an antidote to that anxiety and stress that um, comes with trauma. It can help your brain rewire from those feelings and... Um, so I'm really happy that you're here tonight because that's what this whole series is about. Um, tonight, it's our first art, hashtag art transforms us. And the whole series is brought to you by the good folks at Business Air. And for the next month during May, Mental Health Awareness Month, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 11 a.m., we will be getting together to experience how creative engagement can make us whole through bite-sized performances, instruction, discussion, and, um, and help us get through stressful times. Creative practice truly is an antidote to that anxiety and stress, but it's more than a balm for our, our, our wounds. It helps us really tap into the very core of our humanity, all the beauty and horror of the human experience Experience comes out through art. Uh, art is um, expressed and, and demonstrates what's happening in our society. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens coming out of COVID and the art that comes out of that. And I hope I'll see it from you as well. As the Cubist painter, George Brock said, Art is a wound turned into light. So come join us. We have an amazing lineup ahead um, for the rest of the month. Um, I'll get into the rest of the schedule. We've got Dave Matthews, we've got Leslie Chihuly, we've got comic drawing, flower arranging. But right now we're here to meet David Tovey, who is my art hero. David is one of the most inspirational people and talented artists I have ever had the pleasure to meet and I consider him a dear friend. So I couldn't think of anyone better than to open up this series than David. So please meet my friend, David Toby. So I was probably around about 80 hours a week, drinking a lot, drugs, you know, bad living, not eating properly, um, trying to have a relationship. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's probably what caused my stroke. A couple of weeks later, I found out that um, I had neurosyphilis. Yeah, 10 days after I got diagnosed with cancer. And then I got a phone call from Croydon Hospital and they said, look, we need you to come in and redo some blood tests like this. And I thought, well, why? And jokingly, I turned around and said, why are you going to tell me that I'm HIV positive like this? And she went, yes. When I was sleeping in the car, it was tough. It was hell. It was cold. I had to keep moving every couple of days. I actually used to shave a lot. 
um, because I didn't want people to know that I was homeless. <laughs> because my life had fallen apart so much and I wasn't in control of it and it, it had just run away from me and you know everything was going wrong, you know, everything. You know, whatever I touched would go wrong and it was just, that felt right that I could do that. It was a locked park, it was dark and um, I, I was starting to inject myself and this guy stopped me. He sat, talked with me and, and I broke down, you know, I was, you know, I was bawling, I was crying so much and just letting it all out and I was talking to him and he was asking me why I was trying to kill myself. And that was the first person who had actually asked me, ever. He gave me some money, I think 10 quid, got me some food and got me into a night shelter for the following day um, with the Pillion Trust. From that day, every, every step has been up. This one, I love this picture. The most powerful part of this picture for me is this random stalk just like straight out of it. One stem which stands out from the crowd. They're the ones that make pictures special. First year I got a second place and the cover. The second year I got the, the main winning shot, which went viral. I was also, I'd met an organisation called Clothing the Homeless. I originally got asked to design a t-shirt and I didn't like how they were going to sell it. It was just like, oh, we're just going to do it online. And I went, oh, come on. I said, that's boring. So let's do a big fashion show. And they were like, um, well, I don't know who we can get. And they, were, they looked at me and went, well, can you do it? And I was like, um, yeah, why not? So I went on YouTube and taught myself how to become a fashion designer. <laughs> Arts and homelessness is the most important part of what any charity could actually give to homeless people. Suddenly, they're being given a voice, social inclusion, you know, they're getting public recognition, you know, they're no longer being treated as if they're a nobody. I want to prove that you can pick yourself up, you can rebuild your life. There's always going to be brick walls there. There's always going to be people there to put you down. But I guarantee there's more people there to pick you up. Well, it's 3 a.m. in London, and we are waiting for David to join us. Um, so hopefully he'll come on in a minute. <laughs> Hi, David. Good morning. <laughs> How are Good you this morning. morning? I'm being joined by the cat. <laughs> How's Boris? He's very well. He's very well. <laughs> How are you guys? Was he happy to? We're okay. You know, we're 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 here, and I'm always happy to see you. Um, and you, and you. Was Boris upset about being woken up to you? <laughs> he was upset that I had to get out of bed, yes. <laughs> well, um, thank you for joining us. It shows that you truly are dedicated to your um, advocacy work about making sure that everyone has access to the arts, like your Elmo Cup. Um, the last time you and I met, we... Well, the first time you and I met, we were in Montreal. That's the first time I got to meet you um, through With One Voice uh, during an arts and homelessness festival in Montreal in a, in a symposium of folks who work on arts and homelessness issues. Um, and, uh, and that was love at first sight, I think. We became <laughs> arsenal buddies. Um, but the last time I saw you, you were in Manchester. And um, we were while we were there. We were, I was in the UK because there was an arts and homelessness festival throughout the city of Manchester, also put on by With One Voice, an organization you now work for. But uh, it, the whole thing, which was amazing, culminated in an opera that yeah. you produced and directed called Man on Bench. And yeah. um, I just think it'd be interesting to share with our friends out here, however many of them there are, whoever they are. There they a are. A little bit about the 
inspired you to create that opera? How did it come about? Yeah, so going back to when everyone watched the video then, um, I I originally did a fashion show on the South Bank. Um, and from that, I, I wanted to have a, more of a narrative um, and talk about more about what I'd been through whilst I was on the streets in London. And um, so I decided to transform it into an operatic piece. Um, I think also because everyone kept telling me that I couldn't do it, um, you know, coming from my past um, and my experiences. And, and I thought, well, I want to prove everyone wrong. Um, you know, just because someone's been homeless doesn't actually make them useless. Um, and, and I decided that I wanted to put all this um, out there. So I, I wrote all the uh, pretty everything. Um, I got a composer on board to help me with most of it, apart from one piece that I wrote myself. Um, and then we got 120 people, um, all in all, to come on board and to uh, produce an opera, um, which was completely crazy. Um, I don't know <laughs> whether I would have the energy to do it again. Um, it's also, um, I call my live performance stuff Man on Bench, um, and that's to acknowledge uh, Gavin, the guy who saved my life. Um, and I suppose it, it's, it's sort of a thank you, um, but it's just like, how do you um, say thank you uh, for somebody saving your life? So um, I, I never think that thank you is enough, so I decided to um create a art piece uh, you've, really, you've really risen the bar on the thank you there so <laughs> <laughs> create an opera david i need to move in more in front of your video camera because i can't see you very well and you're just too gorgeous to look at yeah, you can see me now can't you exactly. um <laughs> so um you're working with with one voice right now i think it'd be interesting we've got people logging in here from all over uh, the United States. I'd love to see some shout outs from the UK as well, although it is 3 a.m. So it is 3 a.m., yes. Yeah, but I got Dallas, Los Angeles, the East Coast. Um, so can you share with us a little bit about your work with With One Voice? Yeah, so With One Voice is an international arts and homelessness movement. Um, it was formed around about 2012 um, as part of uh, a bigger organisation called uh, Streetwise Opera. Um, what we do is we, I suppose, we, we network um, and create collaborations across the world with different organisations. Um, and we also do a lot of advocacy work um, and research-based um research <laughs> to uh to raise awareness of the arts and and why arts is so important for people who are or have been homeless um we are 50 percent co-produced so 50 percent of our staff and board are people who are or have been homeless um and this is fundamental with our work because without it um we can't give a fair representation um to everything that we do um, we work across the globe, like I said, um, you know, from Brazil to um, America to um, Japan, where we've been working recently. Um, yeah, that's that's the sort of overview, the quick overview of what we do. And and before um, before with one voice, there was the one, the one festival. Yes. So uh, whilst I was um, sleeping in my car. Um, it was amazing, sort of like the things that go through your head when you've got a lot of time on your hands. And as a creative, um, you're always trying to think of new elements and stuff like this. As an artist, um, it's always really difficult to be able to get your work shown. Um, so if you put an artist trying to get their work shown, and then you get people who are ho homeless trying to get their work shown, it's near on impossible for them. So I decided to create a homeless arts festival um, to showcase um, homeless arts from around the world. Um, I was really lucky two years ago that we had art from Path of Art there um, over in London. 
Right. Um, that was our collaboration with Pearl Jam for the home shows, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know if I remember rightly, it came down one day uh, before in Seattle, and then we uh, we had it in London the following day. So it, I, I remember it, it was quite a panic because it was the same day that the festival was opening. <laughs> so it's a very last minute. But That's how we roll when we're producing and creating things. We just have to go with it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Hill, who created one of those posters, is on tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, amazing. Giving you a shout out. So, um, why do you think art art is so important? And why are you? I mean, you you're an artist. You have your practice, but you're also an advocate for arts and homelessness. How come? Yeah. How come you do continue to do this? Yeah, do you know what? a lot of people ask me that a lot of the times because it's something I don't have to do in a way. You know, I, I've been through my homeless uh, life. You know, I can move on, um, but I decided that as an artist, it, I, art saved my life. Um, you know, if if that if I didn't have art in my life, it wouldn't have given me a focus to be able to progress and actually change my life. You know, it's given me a job. It's given me a career. You know, to go from like living on the streets to having a show at the Tate Modern is nuts. Um, you know, that's unheard of. But because of that, it's given me, you know, and getting my work recognised, it's given me a platform to then also highlight other people's artwork um, and, and, and work with the homeless communities to get their work seen more. You know, I know fundamental how how it changes people's lives, you know. I always say, and it's, it's funny because I posted it on uh, uh, Twitter earlier. Um, I said, it doesn't matter whether you're drawing a stick man or whether you're painting a Rembrandt, it's completely relative to what it does in here and in here. And, and if you concentrate for either two minutes or two hours, you forget about what's going on in the world, you know, you, 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 that, that all disappears, you know, and, and you, you just absorb into that artwork. And to give people the access to be able to do that, and the more that you do that, the more chance you are going to have to help with re um, recovery and to rebuilding your life. Um, you know, I'd love to, it's hard because I know you're on a stationary computer, and so we can't see, I've had the privilege of getting to walk through the apartment and see all the amazing work that you have. <laughs> There's a lot in there. <laughs> a lot. And then, and, 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 amazing um so the breadth and and depth of your body of work i uh there's this i don't know if you can turn the camera to show that big giant bird i know you're doing birds and wings were a feature in your opera but we can't really see it it's not framed there we go there we go you see there's my fake london accent coming up just like a typical american oh, it's the <laughs> accent. i love it <laughs> yeah so I, I, have um, a, I have another piece with me as well um okay, and you get the frame I, I, know, I, I know we haven't got a lot of time but i'm just gonna um you gotta know. you've got to move you've got to move to the yeah there you go there you go I, I i never know which way to lean it no wrong way there we go so that's like the saddest still life in the world and <laughs> <laughs> and i love it <laughs> I, I make depressing art. You should know that by now. Uh, yeah, I know. We talked about that because for those of you who don't know David, you might be able to tell he's one of the most positive people I've ever met. And um, and your art is intense. And um, um, I suppose, well, yeah, I, I, I make predominantly work with um, uh, mental health, uh, homelessness, addiction, um, uh, terminal illness, you know, all, all the subjects which nobody ever wants to talk about. Um, you know, we're, we're, especially in the UK, you know, um, we are, you know, we've got that stiff upper, upper lip, you know, oh, we can't talk about that, like, you know, um, and, you know, and all those taboo subjects nobody ever wants to, to touch. So I, I sort of talk about it because I live through these these conditions. So, you know, if, if I'm gonna make, like I said, if I'm going to make a still life, it's not going to be a still life of beautiful, like, you know, flourishing flowers. It's going to be half dead stuff um, because that's how I feel half the time. Um, and, and it's the same when I'm talking about homelessness. Uh, so, yeah. Um, plus, I, I don't think I'd be doing myself justice if I didn't talk about these 
these subjects because um, no one else is talking about them um, and someone has to because as we know homelessness is increasing massively um, especially with what's going on at the moment with covid you know the oil price crashing economy etc cetera, etc cetera. it's going to get worse so what keeps you going hope um yeah hope that one day it will get better one day one day it'll be more of equal society um it would be nice wouldn't it maybe it's a dream that may be a dream but maybe hopefully it will become reality well i think it's a dream we have to have and that we can keep working on until it, it is reality and then we won't have anything to make art about anymore or maybe we'll just make beautiful flowers um so uh, to be honest, i think there's always there's always going to be depressions there's always going to be you know the poorest in society have always been you know um i was i nearly swore but um you know cracked on um uh, so you know there's always going to be art made by people from the vulnerable um sector i want you to all know out there that david's being very restrained by his use of words so um <laughs> david i you know there's a question that uh i think a lot of people might have is is your journey took you from military service to a series of heartaches, substance use disorder, um, addiction, uh, cancer, heart attack, um, HIV, to living in your car, and then to showing at the Tate, having a fashion show at the Tate, having you know your 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 paintings are like what what started? Where did the art trajectory start? So why, why, yeah, it's, it's a really big question. Um, and obviously we've only got a short period of time. So we're going to move the cat, right? So I can actually place, place them on my laps. When, when I was in my, when I was in my, 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 my car, um, I, I had a notebook um, and a pen and that was it. Um, you know, and when you're living in a tiny car, as you saw on the video, um, you still need to be able to express yourself and be able to get the pain, whether it's anger, joy whatever it is so i had a notepad and and, I, and i'd do stuff like this um and that's that basically says strong um you know and, and try and stay and 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 that's just words and it's just over overplaying all the time um i've got i don't know oh, i always go the wrong way uh and you can probably read at the bottom it says love me when i'm dead um and obviously when living in a car, going through everything I was going through, I never knew whether I was going to wake up the following day. Um, and and a lot of time, obviously, ultimately, it ended to like with me trying to take my own life. Um, but this 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 pad, and I, I've never shown these. Um, you know, they're they're just anger. They're just words. They're just pain. Um, I will one day exhibit these. There's 17 of them, um, which I drew while living in the car, and. But this still is the same art that I'm making today. Um, it may be via a painting or whether it's a theatre piece, whether it's um, uh, you know, wh whatever I do, it's all about resilience um, and being able to pick yourself up. Um, like I said in the video, you know, I want to prove to people that you can rebuild your life. You know, homelessness and people with addiction, um, they're, they're always put down. Um, and because of that, it, it, it's 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 so much harder for us to rebuild our lives um, because of society. You know, because society seems to think that we're not part of society, but we are. Um, we're just pushed away. So you know, now disclosure: he did show these to me before, and I just thought it'd be really cool to to see that I it's the first time I've ever seen it. I think I was maybe the first yeah. person to show them to and now all of you are the second. But um, how do you do that? Can you show us because a lot of us might have pin up feelings. A lot of us might have feelings of hope and joy too. I'm assuming this exercise could go to joy and positive feelings as well, correct? Well, I'm just gonna move my camera so I can balance. Dude, I've been asking you to do that all night to move your camera. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I don't know where it. Can everyone? I'm hoping everyone can see. So I'm gonna tilt it down a little bit. Um, so 
this is this is a really simple exercise and i'd love it if people who are watching actually take time out whether it's two minutes or two hours to do something like this because i think it's fundamentally important especially in the times that we're going through at the moment is the fact that we we have this ability to be able to create something you know and and i'm, and I'm gonna i'm gonna talk about a little bit of fun here because obviously it's 3 a.m in the morning and there's something which I'm really desperate for. And it's sleep. And there's a reason that I'm not getting sleep at the moment. Path of art, because um, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm doing this little session for you, you know, but you know, I, I'm passionate about art, so I'm gonna like keep doing this. But because I am very sleepy, things sort of like <laughs> are going to take over. So the, the whole point of this isn't about the finished product. It's about just letting go and doing something. You know? And we all have the ability. We don't even need to look at it. You know, we could sort of like just just keep going. And you just keep building up. You keep building up, building up. And just let that anger, you know, or joy or passion, you know, whatever you have, just let it out. Um, you know, I'd be really interested to see if anyone's watching, if you can hashtag it um, and send it through. I would love to see some of the artwork created just with a pen and paper, you know, because I think it's really important, you know, because we have this ability to just create wherever we are, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether we're living in a car, whether we're on the streets, you know, I, I said, I was speaking to Holly the other day and I, and I said, you know, one of the greatest things I had from you guys was this, and, and you probably see it part of our uh, notepad, pad. Um, you know, I, I write a lot in this, you know, I wrote the whole opera um, that I did in Manchester in this actual notepad. Um, and, and I think it's really important because a lot of people see it just as a notepad. But to me, this is life, you know, whether we're, and I'm going to try and find a page, um, you know, drawing, you know, little, you know, rubbish, you know, but to me, that means something. I know for a fact that this is the staging in Manchester, you know, that was the whole staging of the show, you know, I also in here have the eulogy for my dad's funeral that I wrote, um, you know, I have the opera in here, you know. And it's a notepad, and we all have the ability to drop something like that to somebody in the streets and a pen and, and just let them create something because um, that makes a massive difference. So, thank you, David. I, um, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to post it at hashtag our transforms us. Um, and I think that some of our guests might have questions for you, so this is a great time to ask David a question. Uh, he's in a very... Uh, extra vulnerable state it's 3 a.m in london so <laughs> i cannot guarantee the answer but um, <laughs> if anyone has a question for david just let me know and i'll shout it out you don't have to look david i'm your i'm gonna have a read actually because it's really nice to actually read some of the things which people are writing so um do you remember much about um montreal when we're out there yeah i do yeah do you remember how cold it was? <laughs> it was so cold. Oh my god! It is right. Uh, Hayward oh, and Jill Wilcutter, who were with like. me from Path of Art, they're on the call right now. Colleen and Jill, they say hello. Ah, so, brilliant! <laughs> um, yeah, we were so cold. It was uh, as my as my husband said that we were keeping it real because there were <laughs> there were people on the streets that night. It was bloody cold, and we. Um, and we were in these tents and it was an amazing festival. So if anyone has any questions for David, just put them in the chat or you're gonna have to hear me blather away. <laughs> <laughs> for us another question, what else would you like to know? Well, you asked me a question. Um, obviously I, I know um, Path of Art is really busy um, and especially at the moment, um, you know, sending out and doing stuff like this and sending out packs and stuff like that. But what do you find one of the most important things that you offer as an organization to the guys who are coming and uh, using your, your space? 
um, guys and women and people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm British. We take guys for everything. <laughs> I think it's um, community. I think it's a safe and supportive community in which to be vulnerable enough to create something and share it because it takes a lot of courage to create art and share art and it's a great leveler and we have um we've had to pivot our programming in a way uh because we're in the group of gathering like a lot of arts organizations and um we gather for classes with our teaching artists with our with our students and our artists and our we gather for exhibitions and showcases and to celebrate all the creation um so you know, I'm really proud of my team because they were able to pivot and get people connected to the internet. A lot of our folks get um, their internet through the libraries or other means. And so my amazing program team got people connected with tablets and internet for those who didn't have access um, because people come to us in the best of times to help combat isolation and, um, and so now in COVID, I think we all can relate a little bit more to isolation. Um, yeah, I, I agree. And I, I'm still, because obviously I was, I was supposed to have been coming out to you guys last year. Um, obviously, uh, you're, 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 that's a whole other show. <laughs> I wasn't allowed, <laughs> let's just say that, uh, because of my past. Um, and, um, and I was, I was truly gutted. But I think now, um, now that we, 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 we're, we're testing this sort of way of um, doing exchanges, you know, maybe this is something that we can finally get that project that we wanted to do um, underway. Um, yes, yes. That might be quite a nice way of doing it. Just make sure it's not 3am 3, 3 in the morning. <laughs> right. I'm trying to get David to start his own like TV channel. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. <laughs> um, so you, now we've got a bunch of questions piling up, but one is, um, what is Luann wants to know what your next art challenge is? Oh, so that's that's a really good one. So I recently got awarded some funding um, to do an, uh, a new man on bench show. Um, instead of it being a big, big 120 people show, um, which nearly killed me. It was just so much. Um, I'm I'm downscaling the opera to a one person piece. It's going to be a multimedia piece. So um, I've been recently uh, making a film um, using digital cameras and the old standard eight eight millimeter camera, which I showed you last night. Um, and I've commissioned the uh, composer that I work with for the opera to re go back and reimagine some of the music. Um, and that will be a one one person piece, um, which will it was supposed to be um, in July. Um, it was actually supposed to open on the 9th of July, um, and which is quite a significant date for me because that's the day I joined the army. Um, and because I'm taking this show back to a solo piece, it's it's based around the narrative of solo soldier um, and his breakdown of how when coming back from, you know, coming out of the army and stuff like that through the trauma that he's um, had inflicted and also self-inflicted, um, the ultimate end goal is um, him taking his life. Um, so it's around that narrative and it's it's quite hard hitting. It's taken a lot out of me to do this one. Um, compared to the opera, the opera was a little bit easier, um, but this one, because I'm taking it to that solo element, um, it, uh, yeah, mentally it's been draining. Um, I've had to get some psych therapy um, to get me through. Doing the piece itself has been, you know, that there's another I, question. I, I, myself. Um, I try and immerse myself um, physically and emotionally. Um, so it's some kind. It sometimes can be really difficult to deal with, um, but I'm really lucky that. I've got a great team around me nowadays. So, you know, if if I do start to sort of like, um, there's people to pick me back up um, and help, so. That's the supportive community piece, right? That yeah. every 
needs. You know, um, Albert Stevenson's asking a really interesting question. Albert says, you are very inspiring, David. How do you balance wanting to use your past challenges as inspiration while wanting to move beyond them and not be defined by them? I think it's a, that's an amazing yeah. question. Do you know what? That's a really important um, question, and and it's something that I I talk about quite a lot because I I choose the fact that I define myself with through my work um, and through my past, um, and 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 that's my right. Um, I have the right to do that. Um, you know, if someone else started to define me as the homeless artist or you know it, it, or in a derogatory way then i can actually go actually no that that's not right you know i'm i'm not ashamed of my past um i'm in a way i'm quite proud of it um you know to you know a lot of people a lot of people stigmatize homelessness and addiction and mental health problems but there's always a reason that that happens you know there's you know it, it, it you know we don't it doesn't just get chosen so to actually live that life and then to really pick myself up and move on from it which i have done you know i've i i haven't drunk for seven years i haven't like you know used for over five and a half years etc etc you know so you know i'm not ashamed of any of my life so I, I am, I'm going to keep using that and promoting it because if my life can change someone else's life, you know, and they see and they think, well, that guy got through it. So if he got through it, I can get through it as well, you know, and, and I'll, I will keep on doing this. Um, I've spoken to my family about it and I said, as soon as it starts causing them problems, then I'll move on from it. But at the moment, I, I, I don't think I can move on from it because, you know, I, I have this mission um, that, and these aims that I want to achieve. So I, I think I'm, I'm being told by the video gods, there are video gods, that, <laughs> um, <laughs> that we have to wrap it up a little bit. But I, um, we have an art prompt and challenge for everyone. So if you could give everyone a prompt, it doesn't to make something, whether it's to make a mark, like you just demonstrated or a painting or um, a poem or a cake. What is your prompt for everyone for the Do next you know what? I, I think as human beings, um, you know, we, we, we've always wanted to be able to tell our stories, to, to archive something about us, um, whether it's a fear, whether it's, you know, uh, and, and I think making a mark, whether it's like I said, you know, a mark, or whether it's a smiley face, or you know, I really like the simplicity of a pen and a piece of paper. You know, it's so powerful. You know, these were done in a car in 2013, um, and I still have them. Like you know, they are literally under lock and key the whole time. So I'd write, I'd like people to sort of like think about their biggest fear and address it with a pen and paper and make a mark. Thank you, David. Um, thank you so much. And I hope yeah. you'll be joining us for the next month uh, at hashtag art transforms us. I hope you all check out David's amazing website is amazing work. And also um, with one voice and the one festival and anything else you want to shout out, David. Um, and we, um, I actually have to ask all of you now, to, well, first of all, thank you, David, my dear friend. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for um, having me. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. Anytime. Next time it'll be in person. Yeah, so, uh, that'd be so, nice. Um, I, I um, do want to remind people that we are raising money to help some of our most vulnerable neighbors get online and get connected to creative practice. Uh, and community, and we have been doing that, but we there are more vulnerable neighbors to do that with. And um, so what's great now is that we're able to have Path of Art classes all over the world, but um, we have a lot of folks here in Seattle who are struggling. And so during the best of times, our students, as I said, come to us to combat isolation. Right now during COVID, they need it more than ever. So if you can give, great. And um, you can text to give. Uh, I think um, there should be a little flashing on the screen. You can give at our website, pathofart.org, hashtag, or pathofart.org 
forward slash art transforms us. Um, but uh, most importantly, we're just glad you're here. And if you can share this out, we have an amazing lineup um, that is made possible by all our generous sponsors, um, which, you know, this is a little clunky doing these things. Our, uh, one of our donors, um, a supporter who believes in the power of art, your gift today up to $250 will be, well, your gift $250 and above will be doubled. So if you give $250, this donor will give, five, will give $250 and that's a $500 gift. And she's going to give triple your donation of $1,000 or more. So if you give $1,000, that's $3,000 to help people get connected to art and um, and tablets and internet and community. Um, I hope that you all do make something. I hope that you come back on Saturday and do some comic drawing and that um, you come back the following Tuesday night and um, hang out with Leslie Chihuly for a while. Thank you for being with us during this very first art transforms us everything is a little new and bumpy right now but i appreciate you being here and um and your belief that uh we can get through this together in community and creatively so be safe especially while you're um while things start to open up be safe don't be safe in your art and right now i want to queue up uh just let you know what Path of Art looked like pre-COVID. And thanks for coming. Well, I think you can't expect people to get better and um, value their own community if you don't create community for them and give them sort of a reason to keep going. It's not enough to have a bed and a safe place to stay and enough food. That's baseline, right? What people need is the ability to feel joy again and have, find meaning in their lives. And so I feel like Path with Art kind of provides this antidote to anhedonia. Anhedonia is the inability to feel joy or pleasure. And drugs and alcohol and mental illness can rob people of this ability to feel like they have meaning in their life or take joy in things that they do. And so providing more than just a meal and a bed is crucial because people's lives, people need to feel they matter and their lives have meaning. Paths with Arts helped me with more than just my recovery. It just keeps me from isolating. You can come as you are. You know, the art is great and all, but you know, it, 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 it's more than that. It's community, it's deep. I keep learning more and more and getting more involved. It cultivates me, you know, I um, improve um, a lot of things about myself. It's really not a stretch to say that Path with Art saved me. Being able to go to Path with Art, you know, it didn't just get me out of the house. It didn't just give me something to do. It provided me with these opportunities to express myself. People will get better if they have community, if they feel that they're connected in some way, that they're not isolating, that drugs aren't the only thing in their life, that they're, only, they're not only identified as a mentally ill person, but they are an artist and they can dance or they sing with the Path with Art singers or in, they're in your fantastic band. So to me, it just was completely obvious that what you guys do here is absolutely essential. Quality arts programming that's free, taught by professionals. That to me is really powerful because it says you matter. 